Hello, and welcome to Really Big Hat. My name is Jared, and this is Pokemon Stadium 2. Today, we are going to be taking our specially trained, overpowered Pokemon that I've trained in Pokemon Crystal Clear back to the Gym Leader Tower to take on Team Rocket, Price, and Claire. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the battles. So this guy's team is obviously going to try and explode. So I've got two options. I can either try and tank an explosion or try and kill him before he has the opportunity. Oh my! Team Rocket has suddenly burst onto the scene. How will their unexpected raid affect the challenger's quest for glory? I did notice a Geodude and a Graveler there, so I decided to lead with Heracross. And sure enough, there's a Graveler coming on the other side. I could go with Cross Chop here and try to one-hit KO it, but I want to see if a Curse-boosted Heracross can shrug off an explosion. So, let's find out. Ooh, just barely. <laughs> Just how you planned it, indeed. I bet. Oh, it's Electro! Well, that's a little upsetting. That is definitely going to be able to outspeed Heracross, especially after a curse speed drop, so... Yeah, not much to do here. I could switch out, but... Eh. I'm gonna send out Vaporeon here. Okay, so he's going with Coughing. It didn't really matter what his last Pokemon was. Starmie would have been a better matchup here, but I sent out Vaporeon because it's tankier, and just in case he decides to explode his last Pokemon for some reason, it'll look better on the score sheet because uh, Vaporeon will have a much better chance at surviving that. And in the spirit of that, I decide to go for an Acid Armor here. It increased its defense. What'll it do? Oh, it's okay, so he doesn't explode, but I do get poisoned by Sludge. I'm not really They're concerned about that. Up. Vaporeon is plenty tanky to survive enough turns to KO him. Or I could Baton Pass out to Starmie. So once again, I'm just gonna call Growth here. Because I'm showing off. <laughs> what next? Ah, and he actually had a zap cannon in his back pocket. That is surprising. Wow. It's a in that case, it's about time to go on the offensive, so I'm going to call a surf. A blow. After a growth boost, it's a pretty easy one-hit KO, so there we're just going to move on. Honestly, I could have played that one a lot better, but, like I said, I was goofing off, I was showing off, and, you know, it is what it is. I wasn't really overly concerned with a rocket grunt, so I just had a little fun with it. But, who knows, maybe one of these guys will actually give me a decent challenge, so let's keep going. Uh-huh. Well, I don't think the decent challenge is going to start here. Another rocket grunt wants to battle. How will the challenger respond to this unexpected threat? I'm gonna run it back with Heracross. I didn't much like him getting KO'd in the last match, so I wanna give him some more time to shine. And she sends out Drowsy. I'm of course gonna go for Megahorn here, because Megahorn. <laughs> Heracross has a pretty interesting matchup against most Psychic-types. 
because he has super effective coverage against them, and they have super effective coverage against him. But Heracross has pretty good special bulk, so he's usually going to be able to survive a Psychic or something, and then fire back with a super effective Megahorn. Typically, he's going to win that one-on-one. -on -one. Anyway, I don't have any good calls against a Spinarak, really. Like, I could pretty easily curse up and then rest off and damage it did and then start hitting it with not very effective cross chops or mega horns. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to switch out. Yeah, like I said, I could rest that off as many times as I needed to, but that would have been a slog. Plus, my Tyranitar has a Miracle Berry, so... yeah. Let's see what her last desperate effort is. Well, obviously Murkrow isn't much of a threat, so I'm just going to go ahead and call a Rock Slide, and we're going to move on. Or we're going to have to wait to move on, because it's going to call Fly. Oh, well. <laughs> what are you going to do? Alright, now that you successfully delayed the inevitable, let's wrap this up. What about this? Out of there. there we go. This time we're moving on. I'm interested to see what kind of Pokémon the admins actually have. Maybe they'll put up a decent fight. Let's find out. Well, 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 that actually doesn't look half bad. I'm going to lead with Jinx here. It has a pretty good matchup against most of the Pokémon I saw. Including Muck. I decide to get fancy and throw up a substitute here, hoping that they're going to go for some kind of a status move. Instead, they send down a Sludge Bomb, so we're back to square one. Now, I could call a lovely kiss here, but I'm just going to go straight for a Psychic. Muck is tanky enough to take one of those, and fires back with a crit. Ah, oh, come on. We're eagerly awaiting the appearance of the next Pokémon. It shouldn't be too hard to finish what Jinx started here, so I'm just going to fire off a Psychic, and we're going to move on to the next Pokémon. Well, once again, this is a pretty interesting matchup. We've both got super effective coverage against the other one, so let's see what happens. Oh, so close. The white hot battle continues. 
Well, I send one more psychic down to wrap this up. Pokemon left to come up. Oh, it's Lickitung! This is the last Ew. Pokemon! Ew! <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, but this is probably going to be a pretty tanky Pokemon, so I'm going to call a recover before I start sending off any attacks, just to make sure that I can survive for a while. And it steals my Twisted Spoon. Wow. Come on, really? Jeez. Oh, and that downgrades me from a two-hit KO to a three. Oh man, that's annoying. That did little damage. A hot battle is unfolding. A furious attack. Hit. That inflicted some damage. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. We're just gonna have to throw out another attack. Yeah, that was slightly more annoying than it had to be. So I guess full marks to the Rocket Admin for slightly inconveniencing me. I guess that's really their job, if you think about it. All right, three down, one to go. Let's finish this up. Well, once again, that doesn't look like a half bad team. That Wobbuffet could be especially annoying, assuming the AI is good enough to predict my moves. So I'm going to start out somewhat passively with Vaporeon here. It's more of a defensive wall than an offensive threat, but it can growth boost to become pretty threatening. However, there's really no reason for me to stay in against a victory bell, so I'm going to switch out. Switching Pokemon! That Pokemon must not have been the right choice! Oh, it's that though! Oh yeah, they're setting up Sunny Day, so that was a good idea getting Vaporeon out of there. I could have potentially set up a Growth or 3 and then tried to hit it with enough Surfs to knock it out, but in the sun, I bet Solar Beam is a threat, and it would be able to Solar Beam me to death before I could get enough Growth Boosts to Surf it to death, especially in the sun. So yeah, the only thing Vaporeon would have been able to do there would have been to Growth and then Baton Pass to Zapdos, which wouldn't have been a bad play per se, but... Still, the switch was appropriate. Anyway, after that crit there, I'm thinking I should probably rest up to be prepared for the next Pokemon, whatever that is. It is a bit of a risk, because if Sleep Talk calls Thunder in the sun, it's probably going to miss. But I'm just feeling like playing conservatively here for some reason. I've been doing that throughout this whole Rocket Endeavor, and I don't see any reason to stop now. Well, maybe there was a reason to stop, because a Hidden Power Ice would have finished it off, and then I could have just rested up against the next Pokémon if it were a threat. So, yeah, that was probably a bad idea in hindsight. Oh well. Haha, <laughs> never punished. There we go. Of the next Pokemon. Oh, it's Wobbuffet! Ok, 
Okay, Wobbuffet could be annoying. It's probably got the bulk to survive a thunder, and if it mirror coats, I could be in some serious trouble. So I'm going to hit snooze and use rest again. Oh, a quick snooze! It shrouded itself with safeguards! So I am concerned about a mirror coat coming my way, but I am just going to call for a sleep talk here and see what happens. As it turns out, what happens is he switches back out to Houndoom. Sleep talk calls thunder, which is good. And it connects because we are not in the sun, so it's not suffering the accuracy penalty. Okay, and it calls another thunder, which misses. Ah. Uh, and now Sunny Day is going back up, so, like I said, that is going to affect the accuracy of thunder significantly. It woke up. So I don't want to risk a thunder miss, because it's going to miss in the sun. So I fire off a not very effective hidden power, just hoping it'll do enough damage. It really doesn't, though. And Flamethrower, boosted by the sunny day, is a relevant threat, so I've got a decision to make. So I go ahead and switch out to Vaporeon here. It can clean up Houndoom no problem, and we'll see about Wobbuffet. What an opportunity! What will it do? It's not very effective! The safeguard wore off! What impact will this Pokémon Switch have on the battle? I go ahead and queue up a Surf here to finish off the Houndoom, but it does actually outspeed me, and hits me with a pretty substantial Solar Beam hit. Not a bad play by him. Not enough, but not bad. Just one Pokémon remains! This Pokemon and at this point, with his last Pokémon being Wobbuffet, it's pretty much all over with the grind. I can go ahead and boost up with growth as many times as I please, and then finish it off with one big Surf. And even if that's not enough, I've got other Pokémon in the back to finish the job. With the harsh sunlight softening, the battle conditions appear to So I do go ahead and just fire off another growth, and I'm gonna do this one step at a time. And Wobbuffet seems to be calling up random moves instead of trying to anticipate at all, so... Yeah, this is just kind of a dice roll whenever I want to attack. So this continues for a few more turns, and we're just gonna speed through that to get to the part where I finally use Surf. Okay, here we go. Finally ready to end this thing. Let's go. What's next? A crushing blow. So I looked this up later, and it would have been only about a 38% chance to one-shot a fully stat-experienced Max DV Wobbuffet with my Vaporeon at plus six. So that's pretty interesting. Anyway, that'll do it for Team Rocket, and we can move on to Price. Okay, so once again, we're up against a first gym trainer who doesn't have very good Pokémon at all. So, we'll make quick work of this, hopefully, and be able to move on to more interesting battles. The first opponent in line is the Border, Alvin! I lead with Exeggutor, and he leads with a Smoochum. I probably can't one-shot this with Giga Drain, so I'm gonna try and put it to sleep first, and we'll work from there. 
A cloud of sleep powder. Uh-oh, and the sleep powder connects. Sleep. Good. It's fast asleep and can't be moved. Now, let's see if I actually needed to do that or not, and see if Giga Drain is a one-shot. Okay, yeah, that's about what I expected there. So, that was a good call on the sleep pad. One more Giga Drain will take care of business here, and we will move on to the next Pokemon. There it is! Naka! That KO will bring out a new Pokemon! Oh, it's Seal! Now this one will get one shot by Giga Drain. So let's get straight to that, shall we? Or maybe not. <laughs> wow. Endure? Really? What is the plan there? Oh, I see. The plan is to recover with a berry and then endure again just to waste my time. Got it. Okay, so this will finish him off finally, and we can move on to his last Pokemon. Okay, so one more Giga Drain ought to get us out of here, and on to the next trainer. Alright, so let's hope that the next trainer up offers a bit more of a challenge. Well, I think a bit more is all I can really expect here little bit stronger Pokemon here, but not massively, so... The next opponent is Carol, a skier. She's sure to battle with the same grace that she shows on the snow-covered slope. Well, we're gonna keep charging forward with Exeggutor, who has a very good matchup against most Pokemon in this gym, apparently. Azumarill is tanky enough to survive a Giga Drain. And they send out an Icy Wind. Points for being super effective, and points for being annoying and dropping my speed, but other than that, not really a concern. Uh, really? We're doing it this way. Okay, fine. The white hot battle continues. What that? That was a glancing blow. There we go. There, Giga Drain, Bullseye. So that is gonna take out the Azumarill finally, oh, and we're gonna move on to the next Pokemon. Pokemon. Well, oh, type-wise, Delibird has a really good matchup against me. Both its ice and flying stab moves are going to be super effective, but 
Well, it's a deli bird, and I'm a fully stat experience trained Max DV Executor, so again, mildly unconcerned here. Oh, it's effective! But not so unconcerned that I'm not willing to use explosion. <laughs> oh, and down it goes! Unbelievable! They both go down! Oh, that's always fun to do when it's completely unnecessary. Oh my! This is one wild situation! Any hoozles, I completely trust Tyranitar to take care of whatever's left. Oh, it's this is the last yeah, that should be an easy one. I probably can't quite one hit KO it, but I'll send a rock slide at it and then clean up whatever's left with a pursuit. You know, that was a little bit closer than I thought it would be. I probably could have managed to one-hit KO it if I had, like, a hard stone as a held item or something like that. Anyway, like I said, Pursuit is going to do the trick and finish it off, and we're going to move on to the Gym Leader. That settles this battle, and there goes the battle! Alright, Price, let's see what you got. <laughs> I don't know about the rigors of youth. I mean, let's put it this way. I was exactly 10 years old when Pokemon launched in America, so... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, though, he actually has a really solid-looking team. Like, I wouldn't exactly laugh that off if it were, you know, a fully competitively trained team. I and mean, it wouldn't be, like top tier, but these are all respectable Pokemon. Anyway, I decided to leave with Scizor. It's got a good blend of offense and defense. It's going to resist the ice moves that could be coming its way, and it can fire back with super effective cross chops. But I'm not confident that it has the oomph to take out a Cloyster in one cross chop, especially without the uh, fighting type stab. So I'm going to set up with a sword stance first. And we're frozen. Ugh. So it's going to be one of those days, huh? Anyway, we're just going to montage this because I never thaw out. So now I'm a little bit irritated, and I want to spread some of that misery right back at him. So I'm going to try and put him to sleep with Executor, even though a Giga Drain would probably one-shot him. A hot battle is unfolding! A cloud of sleep Oh, And I miss. Of course. Well, I survive an Ice Beam, so I'm just going to Giga Drain. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way. Oh, well. And I think he saw it coming, because he decides to switch out. Of course, Dugong isn't going to fare much better than Cloyster is against a Giga Drain. It'll be a two-shot, at least, and on the switch, that is fatal. So we're just going to go ahead and finish Dugong off, and we're probably going to go ahead and sweep through the rest of his team with Giga Drains here now. Of the next Pokemon. Oh, it's 
Yep, Pilot Swine is going to be another Pokemon weak to grass that I'm going to be able to take advantage of with that type matchup, so let's keep Giga Draining. A serious attack! And Blizzard manages to miss. Well, we only would have died to a crit there, so... Really probably didn't matter anyway. There it goes! Right! That's a hit! Down it goes! There's only one Pokemon left. So this is going to bring back that jerk cloister that froze my Scizor, so... It's time to finish this, and this time, it's personal. And yet, it's still a little unsatisfying. Maybe I should have tried to put him to sleep again first. <laughs> oh, anyway, we win, so let's move on to Claire. I guess I did train all by myself. Thank you very much, Price. All right, so we're just gonna jump right on through to the final Johto Gym. And once again, the first trainer in the gym is very unimpressive. So we're just gonna mop up here and move on to more interesting battles, hopefully. This is it! The final gym! Awaiting the challenger are the members of Blackthorn Gym! The first battler is Gloria, a cool player! Alright, so I'm gonna show her what Gen 2 competitive actually looks like, and I'm gonna send out my cloister. She sends out a Jigglypuff, which is a Jigglypuff, so... yeah. Anyway, like I said, I'm gonna treat this like it is actually a serious competitive match, and I'm gonna put down some spikes. It increased its defense. It's a and I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some Toxic as well. I'm gonna go the full nine and pretend this is actually something threatening. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Uh -oh, yep, there we go. Oh, we're asleep. That's annoying. I probably shouldn't have been playing so cheeky, but honestly, it really doesn't matter anyway. So, we're just gonna hopefully wake up soon enough to actually do something, but we're still probably gonna win this battle of attrition with the toxin going on. I mean, maybe. If they get enough turns of rollout in and it starts doing some actual serious damage, I could be in trouble if I stay asleep the whole time, so maybe I'm gonna have to wake up. Alright, so let's see what this next rollout does. What will it do? Hit! That was good! Wow, got me down to the red. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to wake up here if I wanna win this. <laughs> yep, shouldn't have been playing so cheeky. But luckily I do wake up here and I finish things off with a Hydro Pump. Yeah, take that, Spikes. Haha. <laughs> and now, Trunks, Bulma, this one's for you. And even you, Kakarot. Oh my, this is 
one wild situation. Oh, it's that though. <laughs> well, I've got my hidden power ice Zapdos at the ready, so this ought to be easy. You don't often see hidden power get a one-hit KO, so... I mean, that's something in and of itself. Anyway, we're going to move right along to the next train. <laughs> oh, he's got a team of starters. What, were the evolutions too cliche? Ha! <laughs> Come on, dude. The next opponent is Cool Trainer, Vince. He's certain to be a tough opponent. Anyway, between Fire Blast and Earthquake, my Dragonite has super effective coverage against two thirds of these starters, so. Well, but he does send out a Squirtle, which is one of the ones I don't have super effective coverage on. Whatever. I mean, I could beat a Squirtle. I'm actually a little bit interested to see how much weaker this Dragonite's extreme speed is compared to the one that has the normal type move boosting item. And it's actually pretty significantly weaker. I mean, Squirtle is pretty defensively tanky, but still. Hmm. Definitely gonna need to go for a... Ooh! Blizzard! Ooh! Ow! Ooh! Ah! Bad! Okay, yeah, like I was about to say, I need to go for an Earthquake here to finish it off properly. And I got a critical hit for good measure, so, yeah. That KO will bring out a new Pokemon! Oh, it's Cyndaquil! Okay, so this is a lot less threatening. It's not gonna know Blizzard, so I can just send an Earthquake at it and take care of it, no problem. Ah! A powerful blow! Wow! Single hit brings it down. This has turned into a one-sided battle. Oh, it's Bulbasaur! This is the last Okay, and like I said, I'm just gonna finish this one off with a fire blast because I have super effective coverage for two-thirds of these starters. So yeah. So now we get to move okay. right on to Claire. That'll be good. Let's see what she's got. Oh ho ho ho, not bad at all. That's actually a really respectable looking team. Got a lot of different type coverages. Nice. Love to see it. The challenger has finally made it to the final gym leader, Flair of Blackthorn Gym. Let's see if the challenger can So I'm gonna go ahead and lead with strength and send out my Zapdos right away. She does send out Lapras, which is pretty bulky, but I want to see if I can one-shot it with a Thunder. The commands are made. That's it! Man, that was perfectly! Nice! Oh, that was yeah, good. love to see a Lapras getting one-shot. That's a good one. This has turned into a vicious battle right off the bat. Okay, so since this one doesn't have the electric weakness that Lapras does, it's probably going to take two Thunders. 
<laughs> oh man, that's unlucky. Ooh, you hate to see it. Except when it's happening to somebody else, then you love to see it. <laughs> anyway, with that free turn, I'm gonna go ahead and spend it by using Hidden Power instead of Thunder. Just in case Thunder missed. And luckily the blizzard does not freeze us, so we're good there. One more hidden power will finish it off, and we'll move on to the last Pokemon. Okay, so we've got an Arcanine here. That is also a pretty tanky Pokemon, so it's probably going to be able to eat a Thunder, unless I get a lucky crit or something. And we go ahead and miss. That's what I was afraid of earlier. You know, shaky accuracy. So, I'm going to go ahead and start rest talking here, and yeah, we're just going to... Out bulk it. What's this? A light pack. They're both hanging top. There it goes. Okay, so we call up Thunder and it actually hits this time. One more ought to do it. What'll it do? That was a glancing blow. Are flying from both competitors. Two in a row! Hey, hey! And another hit, and it is out of there! We have defeated Claire now. Good job. Alright. Okay, so next time we are going to be taking on the Elite Four. But I am going to go ahead and sign off of the commentary here. I'm going to show a quick little montage of all the Pokemon I use today, as usual. And I will just say I will see you guys next time. Later!